Hey everyone, so here to talk to you about the problems with the set Boeing 737 MAX airplane. The reason I'm bringing this up is because I saw uh, a, a whistleblower from Boeing uh, named Ed Pearson. He's a former manager of Boeing and he worked there for over a decade and he, the previous 30 years he was in the military. Most of that time was spent in airplanes so he's an airplane ex expert and uh, he went to work in their big, in Boeing's big plant outside Seattle in a town called Renton, Washington where they produced all of the 737 MAX airplanes and he, uh, he said in late 2017 as production was ramping up um, Boeing raced to compete with Airbus and he said the production of the 730 MAX went from 47 planes a month, a month to 52 a month and he said that there weren't enough electricians and engineers uh, so they were working crazy overtime they were working seven days a week you know working all weekends week after week after week getting burned out I mean you're burning people out that are making airplanes and some employees were even put into jobs they weren't trained and qualified for, which is kind of scary. Uh, but they were, it's all about the dollar. They were setting safety aside and trying to push just to, for the numbers. Now, in, he said in June 2018, he sent an email to the head of the 737 production team where he said, workers were inadvertently embedding safety hazards into our airplanes and he urged the managers to shut down the plant for a few weeks to sort things out and that he he told them that he well they refused to shut it down of course and then he told them he saw military operations shut down for much less and you know he knew how the smallest defect in an airplane could really affect an airplane and their response was, the military is not a profit-making organization. And translation is, we're a profit-making organization, so we're not going to shut down, even if there's a safety concern. He said the factory was dangerous, chaotic, uh, in disarray, and taking unnecessary risks. Now, the... The House Transportation Committee in Congress has been holding hearings and they found out that the FAA, okay, the FAA is the Federal Aviation Administration, but the, the House Transportation Committee found out that the FAA's own analysis in November of 2018 projected that if the agency did not act, then the MAX could have averaged one fatal crash about every two or three years and that would that's a rate that is much higher than the FAA and Boeing were admitting to at the time again the FAA analysis projected that as many as 15 similar catastrophic crashes could happen in the next 30 to 45 years unless fixes were made to the automated flight control system the projected crash total was about the same as all fatal passenger accidents over the previous 30 years for Boeing's 757, 767, 777, 787, and the latest 747 models. Again, the, this crash protect, projection for the 737 by the FAA was more than all the other models of Boeing in the previous 30 years. Now instead, instead, you know, you would think that, oh gee, you know, maybe we should ground the air, airplane fleet because this is pretty scary stuff. This is unacceptable, these numbers. But no, instead of grounding the fleet, when the MCAS problem, oh, and first of all, I'll mention, uh, if I didn't already, the MCAS system is the software package in this Boeing 737 MAX that is supposed to detect if the plane is going up too far with the nose too far forward and then correct it. I'll explain more about that later. Um, but the 
the FAA permitted the Max to keep flying if Boeing would promise to do certain things to them. So they are letting Boeing police themselves instead of the FAA policing them. So if Boeing could over, they would give Boeing seven months to test and install a revised software for the MCAS system. And, but then you start thinking, okay, well, they can't install it in all the airplanes on the same day, so it, it would be done over seven months. But then, okay, well, what do we do with the other airplanes? Do you keep flying them? And so, yes, the FAA would allow them to keep flying as long as Boeing would brief the pilots about the possibility of sim similar MCAS misfires and how to respond to them. They use the word misfire. Now, I wouldn't feel comfortable on an airplane, and I certain I don't think a pilot would be comfortable flying one if that MCAS system could misfire again, and then they would be told certain things you'd have to try and do to overcome that. Well, you knew that it didn't work out for those two planes that crashed. Um, so, um, here's the uh, foundation of the whole problem. Because first of all, I should explain that Airbus produces 28% of the world's airplanes. Boeing produces 38%. So between them, they produce 66% of the world's airplanes. So they're the dominant force in the airplane. They're almost a duopoly. Um, but they're direct competitors. If Boeing starts getting more orders, then that means Airbus could get less and vice versa. Well, the Airbus A320 is the direct competitor to the Boeing 737. At the time, several years ago, in 2010, there were the Airbus A320 and the Boeing 737-800. That's what they were called. Well, Boeing announced in 2010 that they were going to install a newer, bigger engine uh, to their A320s that would make the planes 15% more efficient. This would save the airlines tons of money on fuel costs. I mean, this could make, take the airlines from losing money to profiting. So, this upgrade would not change the A320 much. It was just basically installing a new engine. They wouldn't have to make any other adjustments in the plane. So, Boeing, in response, said, Oh, we're gonna, we can install a bigger engine too. The only problem is, here's the A320 and here's the Boeing 737 MAX. The Boeing 737 MAX sits closer to the, to the ground. The belly of the plane is closer to the ground and so are the wings. The A320 that sits higher, they could just pop out the old engine and put in the new one. But the MAX, they couldn't do that, so what they did is, Here's the wing. Here's the wing of the airplane. Here's the here's the engine. They would move the engine forward and then move it up at the same time. Well, you know that that's going to change the uh, pitch characteristics of the airplane and the center of gravity of the airplane. You can't just do that because uh, then that's a domino effect. And they also had to move the nose gear forward as well. Um, so what they did, there's this sensor on the sides of airplanes up towards the front of the airplane. It's called the angle of attack sensor and it sits flush with the jet stream is, is what I understand anyway. So the jet stream's flowing, this angle attack sensor just stays flush with the jet stream. Well, it's attached to the side of the airplane up on the front part of the airplane. As the airplane's going up like this, the angle attack sensor stays level with the jet stream. Well, if the airplane goes up too far, the sensor is going to indicate that angle, and then that'll automatically um, send information to the plane's computers, which will then automatically uh, adjust the stabilizer wing on the back of the plane sending it like this to send the nose back down. Well, their sensors were malfunctioning. Um, I don't know if, the, if it was the angle of attack sensor or some other sensors, but there were some malfunctions causing those two crashes because they were forcing the airplane down when they shouldn't have been. 
Now, um, the production the production manager at Boeing said, "Yeah, we can do this. You know, we'll just move the engine forward and up." But again, uh, this is much different than the change Airbus made to the A320. So, um, but you know, the Boeing's. So to tell you about first to get off on to the sales part. Uh, in 2011, there were 1,226 Airbus 320s ordered, but only 150 uh, Boeing 737-800s. Well, after the change, in 2012, there were 478 Airbuses ordered, but 914 Boeing. So it went from 150 to 914 in one year. Well... So instead of re-engineering the plane like they should have, they just installed the MCAST software that would automatically move the nose down if it sensed it was too far. Like I say, the, uh, the angle of attack sensor would trigger the MCAST system if the plane went too far. Uh, because of what happens with the new design, with them moving the engine on the Boeing, it would cause the nose of the plane to go too far up uh, and that could cause the airplane to stall. So that's why the sensor, if it went too far up, the sensor would trigger the MCAS system to move the stabilizer to move the nose back down. But like I say, some sensor somewhere was uh, misfiring and that caused those two airplanes to crash. Now I just think, personally think it's crazy to move the engine on the plane like that. You can't, you know, you're changing the center of gravity and you just gotta do the right thing. You gotta re-engineer the plane. I know that'll cost a fortune, but you gotta do the right thing because you just can't, you know, you're being greedy at that point trying to keep up with Airbus. Now, before the pilots, you know, of the Airbus 3 A320 didn't really have to do much training because there wasn't any change to the airplane. It's just a bigger engine was put on. But there was a lot of changes to the Boeing 737. And so I went, you notice the the name for the A320, um, it changed to A320neo and the 737 800 went to 737 Max. Now the courses for flying it for the first time most pilots were just given a course a two-hour course on an iPad that they hold in their hand they weren't in a simulator or anything and in that course there was no mention of the new MCAST system so in 2018 there were many pilots here in America complaining that to the FAA that the NOS was trying to force itself down um, they didn't even know the existence of the MCAS software. So, bottom line is, Boeing got a little too greedy because their competitor, um, you know, their planes didn't sit as low to the ground, so they could just pop in a new engine. Boeing couldn't, but they were like, "Oh, we gotta, we gotta keep up with the orders." So, uh, like the technicians and technical experts and inspectors. Uh, for the FAA, they said their managers would si side with Boeing management uh, over siding with uh, taking the public safety uh, interests instead. So they would side with Boeing management versus, you know, public safety. Um, that's all greed. It kind of reminds me of the financial crisis when the ratings agencies would side with the banks and say, oh yeah, this is, they would write certain financial packages good when they shouldn't have, but they got greedy. So this is no different, well, the one difference is you have people's lives in your hands. So anyways, uh, that's uh, Boeing for you, and that's it for now.